Larry, my friend, I appreciate you being here today, sir. This is uh, Burn the Ship, our podcast where we talk to people kind of about entrepreneurship and just what they got going on in their life. And uh, you, sir, are you know seem like you have a, a lot of energy and a lot of wisdom to pass down. So I appreciate being connected with you. I appreciate you spending the time here with us today. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Come on, Bailey. I'm happy to be here, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to join you in the house. Burn the ship. That's what I'm talking about, Willis. Larry Long Jr., founder, CEO of LLJR Enterprises. Really, we're out. We're on a mission to impact lives, 1,020 individuals' lives for the positive. And that's through motivation, inspiration, keynote speaking, and coaching. Happy to be here. Absolutely. What does your uh, team look like? Is it just you? Uh, You're looking at them. Me, myself, and I, I got the home team, my wife, my 11-year-old son, my seven-year-old daughter, my mom, who's up in Maryland. We're all rolling, but yeah, pretty much I'm rolling solo. Sure. So tell me this. I'm interested as well to know, um, you know, you're on this mission to impact people's lives positively. What does that look like? And for the people that are in our network and ourself, what is that? What is that impact? You know, what what is that introduction that someone can make to you that you're like, hey, this is a good introduction for me. It's a good opportunity for me to impact people the way that I want to kind of paint that picture for us. Yeah. Any organization or individual that's looking to take their 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 game, their professional game, their personal game to that next level. Uh, essentially, I can provide keynote speaking. I've, I've got my keynote is sales is not a four letter word. Uh, but also around mindset, around motivation. I'm working on a book now called Jolt. And really it's about discovering and many times rediscovering our inner greatness. I'm a big believer, Bailey, that we've all got greatness from within. But somewhere along that journey, somewhere along that adventure, or if you're me, misadventure, we lose it. And we start to have that fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So I'm here to provide that Jolt If it ain't broke, I think some people say don't fix it. I say if it ain't broke, break it. And essentially, that's what I do when I grab the gold mic. I help inspire people so they can find that inner greatness for themselves and take it to the top where they want to get to. Do you do your keynote with your gold mic? Come on, man. You know how we do. (laughs) I've been virtual this whole time, so it's really been a virtual prop. But uh, don't make me go into my bag of tricks. I mean, I don't even play the drums. (laughs) The guitar back there, that's my wife. She said, don't you dare touch my guitar. You're going to break something. But uh, I do know how to use this. I played baseball, four-year starter at University of Maryland, go Terps. So I just got a bag of tricks over here. I got a deck of cards over there. My middle name is Black Magic. Don't tell nobody else. But yeah, we, we come correct. Tell me what your background is. How did you get inspired to, um, you know, how did you get inspired to inspire people the way that you are? Yeah. I mean, I've been, I've been, just a natural born leader through sports. Uh, My path, I mean, after baseball didn't work out for me, I went into IT consulting. And I realized that's not God's plan for me. That's not what I need to be doing. So I moved down to Raleigh, North Carolina, Raleigh Wood, up to no good, and uh, opened up an indoor baseball softball academy. When we ran out of cash, I had to go back to the real world. I said, "Uh uh-oh, I was making 150 dials. I said, ooh, this is getting beat over the head. But essentially, I was able to find my inner motivation and I was able to inspire others, became a leader, became a manager. I've been in tech sales management for a while, and I've been brewing on being a keynote, a professional keynote speaker for years. But I've been I've been scared or as my wife would say, scared. I've been scared. (laughs) So essentially, uh, I've been grappling with it. And as of March 26, as you would say, I burned the ships. Yes. And I'm now stepping into my courage. And I'm doing the daggone thing. So today is business day 22. But who's counting? Come on, dog. Right. It feels, it feels so good. Now, it's still scary. I'd be lying if I said I still don't have that fear, uncertainty, and doubt walking around inside this big old melon. But uh, I'm committed to making this thing happen. Sure. Sure. And if you were, you know, so professional organizations is what I'm hearing. So you're doing events, you're probably doing for you know all kinds of organizations like sports, like things like that type of motivation. What does that program look like? Someone hires you, puts Larry on the books for this day. What, what are they getting? Yeah, it's customized to what they need. I'm speaking to a multi-billion dollar German company next week. And what they need is a word around teamwork, which does make the dream work. 
innovation because when you're a big company, sometimes it takes a, it, it gets stale. Sometimes you got to shake it up. Uh, I just talked to a group of students at NC State in their entrepreneurship clinic. I've got another university coming up over the weekend, a group of orientation leaders. And what they need is a message around the importance of real connections, real relationships. We know that relationships barely is what drives it. That's, that's how you and I met. That's how we made the connection. And as long as we strengthen that connection, it's going to be all good in the hood. So really my message, it, it spans. I talk to for-profits, nonprofits, athletic teams, universities, you name it. I'm going to talk to them and I'm going to, I'm going to give them the word that they need to hear so that they can get in that right mindset. They can believe it right here in their heart. They can believe it in their mind. They can start to confess it with their mouth and then their actions can follow behind it. And we can, we can go ahead and get to where we want to get to. So many times people, their self-limiting beliefs are holding them back. It's that mind trash. We, I can't speak for everybody, but I know that I talk more trash to myself than I would let anyone talk to me. And essentially I'm here to break that up and say, Hey, we're not gonna take it. <laughs> no, we're not gonna, don't get me singing, man. I'm tone deaf. <laughs> I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make your viewers start crying over here. <laughs> so what, what inspires you and where did you learn this, this, uh, the method in which you keep yourself so positive? Man, I've got so many inspirations. My father, who's 66, uh, heavenly birthday was Sunday. He's my inspiration, my mother, my sister, my wife, my kids, and really my whole family, all my friends. They just inspire me to be the best that I can be. And by being the best that I can be, that means touching others and encouraging them to be the best they can be so that it spreads. I mean, I think they told us wear a mask to keep your droplets to yourself. That's good. But we need to spread positivity, Bailey. And that's the genesis of really my being. That's God's plan for me is to inspire people to touch someone that then touches other people and spreads that message of positivity. I don't know about you. I try not to watch the news because they might as well just call it the bad news. Oh, I do not like bad news. It'll put you in a bad mood. So we need some more good news. And we all know that good news doesn't drive ratings. So I'm trying to do my part. When I go out and I speak, whenever I meet someone, I'm trying to inspire them. And I'm just inspired by so many people because life is good. I woke up this morning. Come on, man. Carpe diem. I met a cat who had a tattoo. Carpe diem on this arm. Carpe knocked him. I said, oh, I don't know if you can tell. I got some grays. I'm getting older. I said, <laughs> I can carpe diem, but I'll be daggone if I'm a carpe knocked him. I'm too old. I'm I'm getting older and wiser. My wife said, don't go telling those nice people that you're getting wiser. She said, you're getting older. You ain't getting no wiser. But essentially, I'm trying to <laughs> seize each and every day because guess what? We don't know. We're all running to that finish line. We don't know when our finish line is going to hit. So as long as I'm here, I'm going to make sure that I get the most out of each and every moment that I have. And when people ask me what time it is, the time is right now. Normally, I say bow time. But I'm trying to get ready for the beach. I'm, I'm trying to cut that chicken out. <laughs> There's no time like bow time, but the time is now to seize each and every opportunity and to make those dreams that you have, make them come true. Only you can make it happen. So many times we, we, we play the victim role. Oh, I can't do it because of this and because of that. No, you got to cut it. So tell me, what, what were some of the challenges that you faced over, you know, both your, your personal life and your professional life? Because I know that kind of the, the message that you have is built around challenge and hardship. You know, what whatever forges that fire to make it hard enough where you can build this armor around you that you can, you know, in turn decide that you're going to spread that positivity and help other people develop their armor. What is it that was the catalyst for that movement? There's been a couple. I mean, you want to go into the failures. I don't have enough fingers to go through right. them all. But essentially, I try to use failure as that fuel. It's, it's, it's an opportunity to learn. You either win or you learn. And the more you learn, the more you earn. But uh, I shared with you earlier, I played, I was a four-year starter at University of Maryland baseball. I went to minor league spring training with the Dodgers and the Red Sox. They said, hey, Larry, thank you for coming out. God bless you. And good night. Russell Simmons style. They said, hey, <laughs> don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. We'll see you later. So it says, yeah, I tucked my tail in between my legs. I took my talents to South Beach to kind of drown out my sorrows. And now I was back to work. They said, oh, so soon? We thought we were going to see you on the TV, on ESPN. 
I said, well, you see what happened was. <laughs> so said, that was a huge failure. The next one, I opened the indoor baseball and softball academy. And needless to say, after a year and a half, uh, kind of like my baseball career, I struck out, strike three. <laughs> so essentially, my parents bailed me out. They said, hey, uh, you're not a big bank. You're, you're not too big to fail. We love you so much. We're going to let you shut that thing down. And I had to dust myself off, had to dry my tears. And I'm a big believer that when one door closes, a window of opportunity opens up. But so many times we're dwelling on that closed door that we miss that window of opportunity. So essentially, those were my two biggest. And then the third one, just losing my father five and a half years ago. That, oh, goodness, that's my dog. Meant so much to mm -hmm. me, he still does. But uh, we all go through hardships. Everyone. Life is a four-letter word. Even though my keynote is sales is not a four-letter word, my mom said, sales isn't a four-letter word. I said, come on, mom. You're smarter than that. <laughs> she just didn't get it. Whoosh. <laughs> But we all go through the ups and downs, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. How do you keep that happy medium when things are going great? Stay on your grind. How do you stay positive when things aren't going well and just realize this is a season? I got to keep going. I got to, like, like the great philosopher Diddy said, can't stop, won't stop. Come on now. Right. Right. So that's your your motivation to keep going is, is through that failure and through your, your new kind of derived mission to inspire more people on that path. Tell me what that community or, you know, that, that collaboration of people looks like. Do you, do you connect those people that you inspire as well? Do you look for opportunities to connect and help people empower people? 1000%. What are you, a mind reader? Come on now, BC, you're reading <laughs> my mind. I, uh, tomorrow is going to be my 54th episode of the Midweek Midday Motivational Minute. Every Wednesday at 12 o'clock noon Eastern time, I go on, I used to just do a recording, post it on LinkedIn. And then a, a mentor of mine said, Larry, you gotta get on video, you gotta do live. He said, you're being selfish if you don't. I said, ooh, you ain't gonna call me selfish and walk <laughs> away with it. So essentially we now go live on YouTube, on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn, and we've created a community. I mean, we've got folks that are helping each other out to find new jobs. We got folks that are getting together, working on different projects, business opportunities. So yes, it's all about being a connector because when you're a giver, when you're a go-giver, I know young Jeezy says he wants a go-getter. <laughs> I love a go-getter, but I really love a go-giver. And when you surround yourself with other go-givers, I mean, it's, as J.J. Walker would say, dino my, come on now. <laughs> Ain't no stopping us now in the words of McFadden and Whitehead. That's my jam right there. I know I was playing a little Pharrell happy, uh -huh. but essentially that's my backup. Right, right. So who were some of those mentors? And where did, where were you at in your life when you found some of those people? Oh, good. My whole life, it starts in the house. So my mom and my dad, number one, and I've been blessed with so many teachers, so many coaches, some great some not great. You can learn from bad experiences. I got a good buddy of mine, James Babb. And he said, hey, in every experience, it's all about perspective. And you got to look for the good, the great, and the wonderful. So, I mean, just going back, the teachers, the coaches, uh, business colleagues, business leaders. Mark Winchester is one of my strongest mentors, a uh, great friend of mine, uh, my wife. My wife, she keeps it real. When you look at your personal board of directors, you need people that will cheer you on. Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> but you also need people that will that, they'll, they'll keep it real. They'll yank you up. And my dad's voice, I started off my baseball career, one for my first 24. Bailey, mm -hmm. it doesn't take a math major to know that is terrible. Yeah. That'll get you playing left out. Hey, coach, can I get in? Nah, you're left out. Go to the <laughs> end of the bench because whatever you have might be contagious. <laughs> I remember we were coming from UNC Greensboro. I was on the phone. We were in the Burger King parking lot. My dad had driven down from Maryland. He came to almost all my games. He said, how you feeling, son? I said, I feel terrible. I don't belong here. I stink. I suck. Uh, I don't belong in the ACC, Atlantic Coast Conference. I don't belong in Division I. My dad hopped through that phone. He had some choice words for me. He yanked me up. He said, boy, you can't have my name with a stank old attitude like that. He said, you better get back into the lab. You gotta better get back and start hitting off the tee. But most importantly, you gotta get your mind right. He said, you gotta get your mind right because there's a quote from Henry Ford, whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, 
you're right. And that's the remix. I think he says, whether you think you can, it's the same thing. But essentially, it's so important, that perspective, that mindset. So my mother, my father, Mark Winchester, Morgan Ingram, the list goes on. I mean, I've got a crew. My crew rolls deep. John Pierre Bassor, William Richardson, Matt Anderson, Jen Chalfin, Jamie Sa. I mean, the list goes on. Natalie Gould. I mean, come on now. Can't stop, won't stop. Right. So you develop this community around yourself. What do any of those people have a part in your content? When people hire you as a show, do you think about maybe adding, you know, it's like a comedian. If you're the you're the rock star comedian, you have some openers that, that set the tone for you. Do you have any of those guys that, you, that you've collaborated content with yet? Not collaborated, but just through conversation, you pick up things. I mean, Morgan, his mindset and his way of thinking is different from mine. So he's always, he's sending me texts. Uh, a couple times a week, just on different perspectives. Hey, Larry, have you thought about this? Hey, Larry, I thought you might be interested in this. My mastermind group, I'm in a mastermind group with Walter Bond, who played in the NBA every mm -hmm. Saturday. That's for professional speakers. And we go through different things that make you, things that make you go, hmm. So essentially, I'm always thinking, and recently my wife, she's been telling me for a while, but I finally listened. She said, you got to start writing. You got to start documenting this stuff like a comedian, uh, like an artist. You got to write. You got to hone your craft. And I said, baby, you're right. That, 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 that's tough to say. Yeah. You're right. I was wrong. Yeah. I thought I could just store it up here. So I started writing and really starting to catalog uh, different areas. I'm working on a book. Uh, taking my, my top seven midweek, midday motivational themes and and really starting to write that thing out. And I'm working with, I've got a collaborator that's helping me along this journey. Like I said, it's been an adventure and oftentimes a misadventure full of twists and turns and U-turns, but I can tell you we're having fun throughout it all. Sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That, that That's something that I've noticed, too, is we talk to I mean, obviously, we talk to a lot of entrepreneurs. We talk to a lot of people that we look up to. Do you find as you're exiting that grind of baseball, like you're getting through college, you're at spring training, you're exiting that grind that you had to find your new grind? It, uh, yes. And it was, it was amazing because there's so many parallels to, to team sports, but the game of baseball and life, business, sales, you got to, I mean, teamwork, goal setting overcoming objections and failure having a short memory if, if you if you don't have a short memory in baseball and you strike out in the first inning and you can't forget about it when you're coming up the bat in the third or fourth inning you're, you're not going to have success if you take all that baggage with you out in the field oh and my steve harvey family feud voice survey says yeah you're not going to have success it's the same thing in business it's like hey you got a fido Essentially, my uh, my team at one of my companies gave this to me, Coach Long, Team Fido. Fido ain't the name of my dog. My dog's name was Shaq, 4.8-pound <laughs> Pomeranian. I'm afraid of dogs. <laughs> I heard they like dark meat. But essentially, Fido stands for F it, drive on. I don't know if you have HR in the house, but the F stands for forget about it, drive <laughs> on. We all get hit with obstacles. Family, I need people that will find a way over the obstacles, under the obstacles, around the obstacles and if you have to we're going punch out style bam right through the obstacles so that's how we're rolling yeah that's exciting tell me um tell me more about kind of the book aspect of it what was the do you have other people that have done that what was the inspiration to kind of get some of that content out it's amazing man i never would have who would have thunk it little larry long jr writing a book i never would have thought that i'd be writing a book but i met uh, a young lady at a networking event she said, I'm a ghostwriter. I'm a book collaborator. I help uh, former athletes. I help current athletes write their books. Have you thought about a book? I said, nah, I normally start reading books. I put my little note cards inside of them. And then my wife says, are you ever going to finish that book? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get to it eventually. She's like, you start and don't finish so many books. But uh, I started noodling on it. And I talked with the young lady and she was like, are you ready? I said, ah, I'm scared. And I was working on a project I just released on April 1st. It's not an April Fool's joke. I know I might be a fool, but I pity the fool. I just released my online on-demand sales course and sales community called The Sales Allies. And if you go to the salesallies.com, you'll see that we're bringing a little bit, we're sprinkling a little bit different flavor into the sales equation. Um, generally, sales especially tech sales, is traditionally uh, stale, 
predominantly male and predominantly pale. And you'll see that we just sprinkle a little bit of different flavor around it. But I was working on that project for nine months. Once that was coming to an end, I called the book collaborator and I said, hey, it's not bow time, but it's go time. Let's go to work. So uh, right now we're on chapter three. We just wrapped up chapter three of seven. We got four more to go. But really, my goal is to provide that jolt and, and really to zap people into intentionally uh, that intentionality of, of discovering that greatness that we have from within. And, and it takes work. It's not easy. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it, Bailey. You and I know that most people don't do it because they're scared. They don't believe in themselves. And it's my job, my duty, my goal to provide something that will help them along the way, as well as to leave a legacy for my kids. For sure. I want my kids to be able to see something tangible and say, that's my dad. I want my grandkids to say, that's my papa. <laughs> for sure. I think a lot of people don't, they, um, you know, you're, you're coached around what is around you. And a lot of the, uh, you know, people think they don't deserve success a lot of times is that you're you're taught you know with this grind mentality this capitalist mentality that if you don't do a certain amount of work or put in a certain amount of ground if you're not a certain amount of successful at something then the time that you spent doing that thing was worth nothing you know so a lot of people think oh, i haven't put in the grind yet i haven't put in the work i haven't seen those failures yet i haven't had you know the pressure put on me that some of these people described that made them successful so how am i supposed to replicate that you know that that's something that we've talked about a lot in my office and just a tone that we don't want to set that you know you don't have to come and struggle the same way that our first sales reps did for years when there wasn't the process and we didn't really understand the landscape that we were selling in you know you don't you don't have to have those same shortcomings that people had before you if you learn from those people and especially if you just match their energy and replicate what they're able to do so i think it's a lot of those things i think that they're uh, you know people don't think they don't deserve they don't feel that they put the time or the energy or the effort or that they're spectacular enough to see the success that that they really want um, so I think it's a lot of things. I, th I think it's a strange collaboration that people have. And I call it a collaboration because I want to look at it, you know, like you said, the, the good, the great, and the wonderful aspect of it is that your mind, you know, collaborates sometimes and sometimes it competes with what you want to do with your body. So um, I'm excited about, you know, the type of content you're going you're gonna to put out in the future. I, I think it comes from a really good place. Tell me this, um, and and I'm genuinely curious, I, I, I know I'm, I'm – you know, I know nothing of this. So tell me what, you know, tell me the good, the great, and the wonderful of the climate right now for keynote speaking, for the type of business that you're running right now. Tell What does it look like? Because yeah. I, I think that we're in this so strange... It's going through a reckoning. Yeah, right. And now that I'm doing it full time, it's virtual, which not everyone shows up good on virtual. I've been blessed. I would say it's good that it is virtual because I can engage virtually. I, I spoke to a group of students uh, that didn't want to turn on their cameras. They didn't want to engage, but with a little poking, prodding, and me pulling out the bat, they found out, <laughs> hey, we're going to engage. When he holds up the mic, we better go ahead and do what we need to do. The great is that the opportunity is right now. So many people need it. We've been, we've been through some stuff, Bailey, over the last year plus. We've been through a lot of stuff. I'll call it that. And people are there's a lot of folks that are struggling. And I'm a big believer that I don't want anyone to struggle in silence, especially my males that don't want to, they want to put on the armor and act like everything is okay. It's okay. It's okay with not being okay. And I'm here to tell you that. I'm here to give you a message of encouragement. And I'm here to let you know that I care about you genuinely. I don't care what anyone else says. I care about you genuinely. So that's the great. The wonderful is that, hey, Whenever you're impacting others' lives, whatever's going on in your life, it's just everyone wants that silver bullet. Everyone wants that magic pixie dust to success. Uh, I've got a secret for you. It doesn't exist. But the closest daggone thing is helping others. When you go ahead and you serve others, you put their wants, their needs, their challenges in front of yours. It's magical, man. I can't even describe it. Very rarely am I at a loss for words, but I can't describe that actual feeling that happens when you invest and you give your time, energy, and resource into others. It's just amazing. It's, it's a beautiful blessing. It's actually a miracle when you help others, just how fulfilled. I can't speak for everyone, but my life has been 
the more that I've given, the more that I've received. And not necessarily money. Money is good, but really it's that fulfillment. There's so many times you see all the examples of people who have tons of money that aren't fulfilled. Their cup is not filled. They're not satisfied. It's like, ooh, that's that's tough. That's a tough existence right there that I wouldn't wish upon anybody. Right. Right. That makes a lot of sense. What type of struggle do you think is kind of is good for people? You know, what, what what is it that you think people can run straight into? What are what are those challenges? Stepping out of your comfort zone. Get out there and, and do some public speaking. Go talk to the kids. Go talk to other individuals and share. Start a podcast. That's tough. <laughs> right now, I'm out of my comfort zone writing a book. Go ahead and write a book. Uh, go ahead and try sales. Try your hand at sales. And honestly, I'm a big believer that everyone is selling. I don't care if you have the title or not. My definition of sales is playing matchmaker. You're matching. It could be your thought. could be an idea. It could be a product, a service. You're matching that with someone else's needs, their wants, desires, challenges, hopes, dreams, aspirations. Essentially, this morning at 730, I was selling to my kids, get your little behinds up. It's time to go to school. <laughs> they said, no, daddy, I want to sleep. I said, nope. The more that you learn, the more that you earn. Let's go ahead and get this school started. I got a fifth grader and a first grader, but we're all selling. If you go on a job interview, you're selling. If you're talking to a friend trying to convince them, hey, let's go ahead and go to Bojangles instead of KFC. <laughs> I'm selling you on bow time instead of, instead of the Colonel. So essentially, that's that's what we're trying to do, man. Sure. Sure. Well, tell me, I appreciate your time. I, I really do. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you being a connection of mine. You've definitely motivated me, um, changed the way that I approach my day. Uh, I tune in to your, uh, to your Wednesdays. Um, they're really cool. I'm excited to see what the book looks like and I'm excited to make connections for you. Honestly, Larry, I think your, your, uh, your energy is so contagious that you could make a industry out of being motivational for motivational speakers. You know, I think that's an underserved community of people that definitely need motivation. You know, you got to get it and have it to give it, of course. So, uh, I think that you'll find, you know, your, your business has taken all kinds of shape just because your, your energy is so permeable. You know, I, I appreciate your time today. Tell us where we can find you. If we're looking to get in touch with you, if we've got an opportunity for you, if we've got a connection or somebody needs some help, uh, how do they find you? Yeah. Well, first I want to say thank you, Bailey. I appreciate it, man. And burn the ship podcast. It's been a pleasure. Best place to find me is really on LinkedIn. I got a smile for a mile, Larry Long Jr. I've got a YouTube page. You can tune in there. My website is under development. So hopefully by the time you hear this, LarryLongJr.com will be live. We, we try to switch, flip the switch. But uh, right now it's under construction, coming soon. But essentially by hook or by crook, I'm out there. You can find <laughs> me anywhere, everywhere. IG, my son said, don't call it Instagram, dad. That makes you feel old. <laughs> TikTok, I just made my first TikTok today. Twitter, Facebook, you name it. Oh, you're going to be famous <laughs> on TikTok. You're going to be famous on TikTok, sir. I'm telling you this right now that you're going to be famous on TikTok. It's, it is, it is exactly your playing field. It is exactly your playing field. I mean, if you bring the energy that you have now to exactly what the landscape is over there, you're going to have no problems. Uh, but anything that we can do, I invite you to our networking group. I invite you to, to take advantage of any of our network and, and connect with those people. Any person that I feel is connected with you is better off. So, uh, we'll find some people to connect you to. We'll keep you in a in loop. Hopefully, we can use uh, you for a couple of our own events. Um, we do a virtual as well as a face to face event. So, love to have you there. Love to have you motivate some of those business people as well. Whenever there's an opportunity and a way that we can formulate that as well. But I'm just like I said, I'm excited to know you. Uh, I'm better off for it. So, uh, I think we're good now. I think we're about to wrap. Uh, but like I said, I appreciate your time, man. I really do. Your your connection definitely worth having. Go out of your way to connect with Larry for sure. Thank, thank you, Bailey.